Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. My name is Reverend Mike Schoonover and I welcome you to this YouTube service. Happy Labor Day weekend. Do hope you have a fun weekend, whatever your activities may be. Our opening affirmation is from Wings of Prayer and it's from Daily Word, September the 28th, 1930. Perfect eyes, perfect vision. Your eyes will do perfect work will see all things clearly. Just invite you this morning as we're going into the first Sunday of September that we open ourselves up, our eyes to see the truth, to see the world in which we live and move and have our being. We are here to see and enjoy this world. We're not here to escape it. We're not here to sleep through it. We're here to enjoy it step by step. So again, I just invite you to take in that divine idea of perfect vision. And we know our eyes don't see, we see with our mind, our mind's eye. At Unity Way Church, we affirm one presence and one power, God, the good, the omnipotent, one life, one substance, actually one spiritual vision. That's the perfect vision of the Christ within us. And if we happen to have some eye troubles or vision challenges, let us affirm that we have the eyes of Christ. The Christ eyes are within us, and as we activate that divine idea, they truly will materialize in our lives and in all our circumstances. If you believe that high truth understanding with me, I would invite you to use a mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is, amen. And now here is Cynthia with The Daily Word. Good morning. The daily word is ease. And the affirmation, beholding God in every circumstance helps me know ease. It's easy for me to find God in the glory of a sunrise and in the laughter of children and to feel God's love as I get together with friends or family. Wherever there is wonder, joy, or fellowship, God is surely present. I remember that God is just as surely present when my responsibilities feel overwhelming, when conflict arises in a relationship, or when it feels as though there isn't enough of what I need. If I begin to feel tense, fearful, or frustrated, I remember that wisdom, love, understanding, and strength, all of the divine qualities that live within me are ready to help me handle any challenge. Assured by my awareness of God's presence, I move with ease and grace through whatever this day brings. And from Proverbs 133, those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. And once again, the affirmation, beholding God in every circumstance helps me know ease. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. A perfect daily word for today, especially on Labor Day weekend. Ease. And ease is really living in that relaxed state. That state that your life is living day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment. And ease and grace and divine order. And that's a divine idea we want to hold on truly as a Christ soul. Since 1890, someone has been holding a high watch. That watch is truly the pulse, the heartbeat of Unity School of Christianity. Right now back at Unity Village in Missouri, in the silent Unity Chapel, there is a person sitting in front of those prayer claims, holding that high watch, the high truth for all the prayers that silent Unity has received. I would like to bless that soul and say thank you for holding that sacred space. Thank you for holding that sacred space, not only for those prayer claims, but for us and humanity. I also want to bless those prayer claims because our church prayer claims are also back there being prayed over. So again, we bless the situation. We bless this whole idea of silent unity. By the power of truth, I'd like to bring some of that healing energy into this sanctuary where I am this morning. And as it permeates and floods this room and goes out over our our property out to wherever you may be. May you know that you are never alone. May you know that there's always someone sitting in prayer, literally affirming your best, 
affirming that the divinity within you is always active in every circumstance of your life, regardless of appearances. And if you believe that truth, I invite you to use a mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Oh, I have a little doozy, doozy, doozy of a comment for you. And you can see it's a husband coming home and his wife is there. And he just walked through the front door and the caption reads, I told my boss I was retiring. He said he thought I already had. <laughs> already had what are you talking about oh you can see that worker is not a very happy 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 camper keep the milk duds in the container please come on humor is good for the soul and now uh, a joke from my minister's joke page peter uh, confronts his friend at work uh, paul paul uh, did you yell at my wife, slap my kids, and kick my cat when you came to pick up that folder yesterday? Did you really? Uh, uh, Paul stammers and says, uh, uh, "Yes, but but remember, uh, but you told, but 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 your wife said I should make myself at home. Ha <laughs> ha! You know that's not acceptable behavior. No 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 no. You just keep in the seats, keep in the seats." And one more from my minister's joke page. Children, this is some philosophy on children. I'm sure some of, some of you can relate. You spend the first two years of their life teaching them how to walk and talk. Then you spend the next 16 years telling them to sit down and to shut up. Ha ha ha. Oh, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Humor is good for the soul. Humor is good for us, too. We need to laugh more, even if it is Sunday. This morning, my talk title is Labor Day. And again, I want to bless you for uh, tuning into this YouTube channel this morning. And I want to know that you are definitely blessed. We're going to be talking about what labor is, especially metaphysically and how we can apply a divine idea of labor into all of our life activities. This morning, I'd like to share with this concept with you this concept that I'm going to be weaving through this uh, talk and it's mindful labor. And what I mean by mindful labor is whatever activity we do, are we doing it with our divinity in mind or are we just getting by? We're just shuttling over something, just getting by, getting to the other side, getting to the next chapter. This Sunday, I want to remind us that all labor is honorable. And as good, true students, we should be mindful of every activity that we do. I want to say the first Labor Day holiday was celebrated in New York City on September the 5th, 1882. That's not that long ago. A little bit of history about Labor Day. After 13 workers died during a Pullman strike, June uh, 1894, President Grover Cleveland made a reconciliation with the labor movement a top priority of his administration, and Labor Day became a federal holiday in 1894. What I think is interesting is the need arises, then we take action. Kind of like with our life metaphysically. As the need arises, we take proper right action. We must remember, which some of us maybe have forgotten, is that Americans work 12-hour uh, days, their shifts, and it was seven days a week during the 19th century. That's what you call a long work week. Uh, the Adamson Act, which was passed on September the 3rd, 1916, established an eight-hour workday. Think about that. I mean, again, that's not that long ago. Can you imagine a seven-day work day and it's 12 hours a day? I mean, that, I mean, you can see how you could have accidents and it would really put pressure on people. Labor Day is the first Monday in September. Also, Labor Day is a tribute to the uh, people and workers who made our country what it is today. There's always a history to it. And of course, a little bit of tidbits. I'm sure you heard this. My grandmother used to say this all the time. You can't wear white after Labor Day. How many of you heard that before? The rule was created to separate the old money elitists 
from the New Money Group. See, there's always a reason for something. The elitists left the city during the summer months, and white was considered only vacation attire. I thought that was very interesting. The real reason why you're not supposed to wear white after Labor Day. The object of all work is to express the powers of one's being for mankind's benefit. We are here to work. We are here to have activities. We're not here just to stay at the beach and get a suntan. We're here to use our energy, our soul energy, to do and accomplish tasks that we feel that we need to accomplish. I'd like to base this talk on a scripture reading, and this is from the Jewish scriptures, the great book of Psalms, chapter 128, uh, verse 2. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. We eat the fruit of our labor is because the labor really becomes the effects that we want to experience, the circumstances we want to experience in our life. And this is from uh, the letter to Colossians. This is the New Testament, and this is Paul's letter. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. And what Paul's telling us is we are maybe working for other people, or we have a job, or we have a task that we're doing, we have a career. But let us remember that we're really doing it for spirit. We're doing it for spirit within us. And I think that really puts us back into an alignment with the truth of our being. All labor, all work is honorable, especially if, he, especially if it is being done in a mindful way. So mindful labor is really being conscious of the activities that we're doing. Labor Day is a day dedicated to the go-getters, that's what they say, and, a valuable, and it's valuable also to the hard workers of our country that keep our country moving. You know, we might be celebrating a, quote, day off, but other people are not, they're working. And we give thanks for those individuals, the people who are in the police departments or fire departments or the people working at the airlines or working at the power plant, the water company, wherever it may be. We honor them and we honor them that they're willing to work and do that task for the best of their abilities. Labor Day uh, celebrates mostly or a lot of times with big barbecues in the backyard beach trips or neighborhood gatherings. What is your best remembrance of a gathering on Labor Day? I challenge you to think about that. And when's the last time you really had a great Labor Day? Whatever that may be. It might not be going to the, the city park and having a barbecue. It could be doing something that you enjoy doing. That's a blessing too. And that allows us to live in a mindful way about labor. So then when we do get back to our normal duties, we have a spring in our foot. We're really balanced because we have taken that pause. Uh, the day is a very significant day because it pays tribute to the American achievements of the workers. This country would not be here if it wasn't for the workers. The backbone of the people who made this country allow this country to be the activities that they've done. And I think it's a good thing to honor that. Not only the workers, but all the individuals, again, who have a role to play in the activities that they do besides raising their family or living their life, but they're contributing to really the, the economy in which we live, which is very important. During Labor Day, we reflect and we celebrate, again, a working nation's resilient contributions of American workers. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying all work conditions are perfect. I'm not saying that uh, all work doesn't have some challenges to it, but I'm looking at the divine idea of really labor. Why are we doing it? Hopefully not just for a paycheck, because that's really not the reason. That's not really being in mindful labor. This is from the great... Greek philosopher Aristotle. Pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. Everything that you touch, everything that you do, from how you uh, iron your shirt, to how you take your trash out to the street, to how you fold the paper, how you put your uh, silver in your drawer, do you do it with that kind of uh, idea that you're really doing it with perfection? Do you really believe that, that you, you're gonna do it and you're gonna do it correctly? 
I think it's very important because if we're going to believe in mindful labor, we need to know how it is going to be done correctly. Means when we iron, we want to make sure that we're ironing a crease. We're just not ironing wrinkles. It's very important. Uh, again, Labor Day marks the end of summer. This, we are entering the end of summer. It doesn't feel like it because the humidity sure does feel like summer still. And we get to revel in the memories and look toward a new horizon as we look toward the changing of the seasons as we go into fall. We have all these seasons. We go in the circle, the cycle. So much of like our consciousness, the evolution of, of our understanding, we go through cycles. And as we go through those cycles, we truly can enjoy each one of the seasons. We can rest and we can reset for the rest of the year. We can seek happiness and jobs well done. My prayer for each and every one of us is whatever job you do, may you do it in a mindful way with this high idea of mindful labor, that you're doing it because you want to do it, you're doing it and you're going to do an excellent job, regardless if you get a pat on the back or anyone sees you. You do it because it's the right thing to do. This is from the minister Robert Schuler. Look and study very carefully your prejudices, your passions and your concerns. Chances are it will be in these areas that you will discover your blind spots. What Robert Schuler is sharing with us is we do have blind spots. And I would call those places where we uh, could do more soul growth. And I don't bring that up to beat us up or anything, but every day we want to expand and get better at what we're doing. Every day we can be mindful of the labor that we do, and we're doing it to the highest of our soul's ability today. And that means tomorrow or next week or in 2023, it'll be different because we're evolving to a higher vibration. That means we're mindful of everything that we do. Before the reward, there must be labor. I think we live in a world sometimes that some people seem to sometimes forget that. We plant before we harvest our life dreams. Harvest, such an important time, especially in the older days, because harvest is when the food was collected. It was when things were stored. It was when getting ready, preparing for the season, for fall and, of course, winter. Now we can go to a different store and buy canned goods or we can get our vegetables almost uh, year round. But in a traditional society that is based in real agriculture, if you don't grow it, you don't get it. This is a very important time. And the blessing of that labor is the gifts that you receive. You can harvest the wheat. You can harvest the fruit. You can harvest the melons. And it, there's something very much alive in that divine idea. And you can take uh, really great pleasure knowing that you did mindful labor, that this is the fruit. This is the fruit. That doesn't mean everything you grow in your garden is going to be perfect and look like something on the shelf, but it tastes different. That's why I always encourage people to have a rose garden or plant some tomato plants or do something like that because when there's, it just tastes differently. And I account it for or I count it to this idea of uh, mindful labor. Big life secret. Do you know what the big life secret is? You ever heard this? Shh, the big life secret is that it really isn't a big secret. We reach goals by being willing to do the work. Are you willing to do the work that you are called to do? Not what I'm to do, not what they're to do, not what they're to do, not what they're to do. Are you willing to do the work that you are supposed to do? And you know if that's your work because you'll know deep within your soul. We're only required to do our work think that's something we really need to take into prayer, especially when we pray about this divine idea of mindful labor. This is from Thomas Edison. I'm sure you've heard him before. And he shares an insight with us. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Or, yeah, perspiration. Uh, yeah, and I'll tell you, it's the truth. It is the truth. You can have all the great ideas. You can have all the great seeds in your barn. But unless you plant them in the soil, unless they're watered properly, unless you look after them, they're not going to bear the fruit that you want. So, again, uh, mindful labor is asking us, where are we and what are we engaged in? How can I be more engaged? How can I really bless this activity that I'm going through? Labor to me is all about 
also following our passions. Our passion is to be prepared for the work that we do. Meaning that if you're going to be prepared for the work at hand, you need to put yourself in the right mindset. You just don't want to wake up and jump out of the bed and do it. I mean, it can be done that way. But I, when I'm talking about mindful labor, the activities that we do, if we want to have a big dinner, we need to make sure we have all the ingredients in the pantry before we start cooking. We don't want to start cooking and then have to turn everything off and run to the store. Again, that's preparation, which is so metaphysical because we want to be prepared for the activities that we do. Don't let others limit your life labor. One of the greatest strategies, I think, in life is to get to a certain point in your life where you start reflecting and you realize that some of the dreams that you held on you weren't able to realize for whatever reason. This Sunday, let's be mindful about the labor that we engage in because it, the labor that we engage in is connected to our life dreams. And we are here to have bold, technicolor dreams. I'd like to share a story with you, and it's about labor, and I, I think this story is a little bit fun. We've all had jobs in our life in the past that we did, and uh, they weren't the greatest of jobs. Uh, they paid some money, but kind of we all start someplace, so I'd like to share this story with you. This is 1982. A month, this is a man, a month after graduating high school, woo, he graduated here. Uh, he was at his height. He was really, really right there. The world was, it was at his at his feet. He was ready to take on the world. Hopes and dreams were right there. He was ready to step into a new career, go to college, or whatever he's going to do. But instead, what he ended up doing is going to Northside Baptist Church. And yes, he was the janitor. He took a job as a janitor. There's nothing wrong with work. And he shares this story. Every day I was to clean the sanctuary. Uh, straighten the hymnals, uh, pick up trash, uh, pick up gum crumbs or cake crumbs and the stuff that was always left or spilled in the nursery. Don't tell anyone, he says, but I don't think I ever dusted off anything in the sanctuary or in the nursery. You don't tell anybody because I'm not going to tell anybody either. Um, the worst part was every single night. He had a routine he had to do. My job required me to clean the church office, take out the pastor's trash, make sure there was coffee in the coffee maker uh, for the next morning, and paper. Uh, he had to load the paper in the copier machine to make sure when they came in that they could do any printing. They didn't have to fiddle with the uh, paper. It's my story. We're going to come back to that. This is the famed poet and actually Unity LUT student, Maya Angelo. Nothing will work unless you do. Are you willing to stand up? Are you willing to stand up in your own life and do the labor that you need to do to self-actualize your soul? Because that's really the purpose of labor, is to self-actualize who and what we believe we are. You're the Christ. I'm the Christ. We are the Christ, and that affects how we do our activities. That means we can engage in truly mindful labor. What do you say on Labor Day? Hmm, the question. Uh, pleasure in the job puts perfection in my work. Again, do you have pleasure in the activities that you do? You should. Even if it's vacuuming or cleaning the windows or cleaning out the garage. Whatever you do, take a deep breath. Put a mindful breath into the labor that you're doing. Enjoy it. Find, find joy in the activity that you're doing. I would also encourage you to try new things. Try some new things. Maybe vacuum at a different time of the day. Maybe clean the garage or at a different time than you usually do. Put some spice in it. Make it different. Just don't have the same old over and over and over. Because what it does is it gives us a freshness and really allows us to take on this idea of a mindful labor, the activity that we do in a fresh way. And something I think we get in so much of a habit, and habits can work against us, especially if they're activities that we have to do habitually. This is from a very famous baseball person. I'm sure you've heard of him, and he also has a candy bar named after him too, Babe Ruth. And he says, it's hard to beat a person who never gives up. You can say that again. It's hard to beat a person that never gives up. That's quite a mantra. That's quite a Labor Day mantra. Are you willing to take on the Babe Ruth challenge? 
Are you willing to live life? Are you willing to go after your dreams? Are you willing to take on any activities that you're engaged in, that you want and you desire, the aims of your life? Are you willing to take them on and not give up? Not say uncle or aunt, but be focused on your goals. That's what Labor Day is really all about. You know, we honor the idea in our country, but also the labor that we do. What are we here to accomplish? What are your aims? Not my aims. What are your aims? So I think that's a divine idea. We need to not give up. And the reason why we don't have to give up is because we know we're full of divinity. That Christ within us gives us resilience and endurance. Labor Day recognizes working men and women who make our nation and its a common economy prosperous. Prosperity is one of the things that we teach. Health and prosperity. You can't be happy if you don't have any money. And of course, prosperity means more than money. It means having your life unfold exactly the way it should in the moment that it is unfolding exactly where you need to be. The parking place shows up. The check comes a day early. The book that you're looking for arrives. Whatever it may be, the vegetables that you want to buy at the store, the, the thing that you have on special order from Amazon finally comes. That is what I'm talking about. Really, prosperity means that it's not just money. It's living in that flow. It's a mindful flow of the labor that we do. Again, whatever activity we're doing, we want it to bring the results that we want. We don't want to be engaged in activities that don't bring the results that we want or the effects that we want, because that brings a lot of confusion in our life. And as good metaphysicians, we believe in cause and effect, and we know effect will always follow cause. We show deep gratitude again for the workers, the consciousness of the workers that built the railroad. You know, we don't usually travel by train or Amtrak anymore, but the uh, bringing and the laying of the tracks in this country across this country, the dams and the roads and the different things that have been installed and created and dreamed about, it just didn't happen. Whether we, whether we realize it or not, these things people put their blood, sweat, and tears and their soul energy in. And I would believe if you spoke to these individuals, even though they're past, the people that laid the railroad tracks, the people that uh, help uh, create the highway system that we have, it was a labor of love. It was a mindful labor. Sure, they were paid for their activities, but they were doing something for the good of the nation. They're doing something that stands for prosperity for all of us, not just a certain set of people or a group. It's the group. It's our nation as a, as a whole that can benefit from that labor. We show gratitude again for the workers, their grit, their ingenuity, their strength, and the labor that defines our nation's character. I think sometimes we can be a little bit negative about our nation in many levels because there's places that this nation as a whole can grow. But I, I, I still think this country has a lot to offer. And I don't think there's any other country that offers the opportunities that we have. Are we perfect? Heck no. No one ever said we're perfect. Even our founding fathers weren't perfect. I mean, we're not totally perfect. But we keep striving toward that divine idea that divine idea that the labor that we're engaged in is meaningful. It's mindful labor that we're doing. And again, it's not only good for us, but the good of the consciousness of our entire nation. This is Harvey Mackay. Find something you love to do and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Here's the deal. When you do something you love, something that brings passion to you, something that excites you, really stirs up the resilience within you, you don't mind getting up early. You don't mind staying up late. You don't mind going that extra mile or two miles. You don't mind having to restart your computer. You're doing it because you're engaged in an activity that you know is going to bring blessings to you. So it's really, again, it's a mindful labor. You're not just doing the activity, but you're doing it with a spiritual consciousness behind it. Employees and their achievements is born out of the struggle to rectify poor working conditions. Imagine a 12-hour day. Actually, I can't imagine a 12-hour day. Seven days a week? I don't think so. And one of the things that's missing in that, and one of the things that came out of that, that system is we have our, uh, 
our work week and how we're set up now. And we have Saturday and Sunday off usually. Let's take a breath because that's really being mindful. That's mindful labor. Because if we can take a pause that allows us to get back to our activities, we're refreshed and we can do actually a better job. When we're just go, 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 our skills and activity and the product that we produce really, really pays the price for that. There's nothing wrong with taking a pause, having some time off, putting yourself back in alignment. So then when you start the task again, it really is mindful labor. The Industrial Revolution ushered in the manufacturing age in our society. And again, it brought the 12 to 16 hour workdays. Some, sometimes it was 16 hours in these factories. Seven days a week, on safe, sanitary conditions. And I bring that up because I think many times we uh, take for granted that we have plumbing. Sometimes we take for granted that we have running water. I think we need to take a pause. And let's be mindful of the labor that we have, that we have a sewer system, that we have running water, that we can flip the switch. Many people will say, yeah, but I'm paying for it, Reverend Michael. We're paying for it. What's, what's, I don't care if you're paying for it. You still have the ability to flush the toilet. You still have the ability to plug in your toaster. You still have that, and that's because somebody has dedicated their life at some time to put this out for the good, for not only themselves, but for all our society. And we just want to put a, a real high mark and a gold star on that activity. That's mindful labor. I will say that two local protests against negative conditions were really what propelled these changes in our country. People were getting killed. Children, there were no child labor laws. I'm sure you've seen those black and white pictures of these little kids doing this stuff and spinning where they're doing fabrics, we're creating, doing some dangerous jobs, dangerous jobs. Let's take a pause. And I think sometimes when we look back in the past, we only see the good. And there was good there. But the past is no more perfect than the right now moment. That's true metaphysical thinking. That's really having mindful labor in our consciousness. And I want to get back to that story who was going to take on the world before he went to college. He ended up being uh, cleaning a sanctuary at a church. One day, attempting to buff the uh, church's foyer floor, he was cleaning it, and suddenly he lost control of the buffing machine. And you know those kind of machines on the floor. What happened, it caught some of the molding at the edges, and it jammed the, uh, the wand the, uh, where he holds on to it, and it jammed him in the pelvis. He lurched back in great pain, and the buffer spin widely around in a circle and smashed the walls. It smashed the walls with the handle. And because it ran, 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 because it couldn't turn it off. What he did is it punched holes in the walls that night. He finally unplugged it. And it was right at the church main entrance. Right at the church's main entrance. What he did is he covered the scar as best as he could with a plastic fern plant. <laughs> Guess what? It didn't work. Uh, but God and the youth director confronted him the next day. Uh, the next couple of weeks later, I utilized the, he, he also what he did is he got past that. He started, he was cleaning in the sanctuary and decided he'd listen to some tunes. So he started to utilize the church's uh, sound system. And while he was doing that, he did something wrong and he ended up dropping the knob. And what he ended up doing is blowing up the church's speakers in the main sanctuary. And what I love about this story is we've all had activities that we've done in our past that, you know, they, they bring a chuckle to our face now, but at the time you didn't, at the time you did them, they really didn't. I remember I worked for a dairy here in uh, North County, and one of the activities that I had to do is with a trash can, go around and pick up cigarette butts. And I'm gonna tell you, unless you start picking up cigarette butts, you do not know how many cigarette butts there were in the world. I'll tell you, that parking lot, it seems like I wasn't even past two inches. I mean, there was a sea of cigarette butts. And I, and I had to talk myself while I was doing it because it would happen in, in the 80s when I was doing this, I'd be picking up cigarette butts and some of the people would put the cigarettes, the butts out in front of me. And I'm like, God, you know, no, 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 no. Put it in the trash can for me. So we all have done things that maybe we don't want to do now, but we can look back at it with perspective. 
And I think that's what a Labor Day idea that we can hold on to. Mindful labor. Give us a perspective. And this is from the Jewish scriptures. This is Proverbs uh, chapter 10, verse 4. Lazy hands for, excuse me, lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. What are you doing with your hands? Hands symbolize our mobility, our, our, our understanding of doing activities in our life, being engaged with this world we live in. You know, as metaphysicians, we're not here to escape life. We're here to enjoy life, which means we're here to engage. We're here to do. That's why we have, the, that's why we have hands. So what are you doing with your hands? What do you do, do during the week with your hands? Do you bless your hands, that ability to pick things up, to clean things? Just that simple task right there is truly being engaged in mindful labor that we should really think twice about because it puts a deeper understanding into our life. Am I doing my best? My prayer is that each and every one of us is always doing our best. It's a good reflection of time whether or not we're doing our best life work for our employees or if we're our own boss. Where are you when you're doing your work? The question is, where are you consciously when you're in your labor? Only we can really answer that question. Have we ever slacked off? I'm sure we have. And are we really giving our life's best? Something to think about. We're here to not only enjoy life and, and experience life, but that means we have to do our best. And that means on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday, we're going to get better each and every day. This is from Albert Hubbard. A man is not paid for having a head and hands, but for using them. So again, this idea of what are you engaged in? What are you engaged in? What do you want to be engaged in? Maybe you want to get engaged in another activity, another hobby, another doing macrame, doing something else. You get to decide that. And when you do it with intention, with this idea of mindful labor, it means that you truly are in the moment. It's like when you're brushing your teeth. If you're brushing your teeth, you need to be concentrating on what you're doing. So many times in life we're doing something, but we're really not there. Maybe this weekend we can call ourselves back to that alignment is that when we're engaged in doing something, let's be present. We can't go back and rewind yesterday to make up for those lost labor days. We can't go back in time, but we can understand and have perspective, which I think is very important if we're going to hold this divine idea of mindful labor. It gives us a proper perspective. We do the best we can today. Today's Sunday, and then we do tomorrow. Remember, it's one truth day at a time. It's really one truth labor day at a time. That's all we're required to do. And this is from a very famous woman. I'm sure you heard her name. It's Estee Lauder. She says, I didn't get there by wishing for it or hoping for it, but by working for it. You have a desire. You have a dream. You have an aspiration. You have an aim. You're going to have to work for it. If it's really something that you want, you're going to have to roll your sleeves up. And then the labor that you do will be mindful, but it'll really fill you up. So again, if you have to go to bed late and get up early, you're willing to do it because you're engaged and you know this labor is going to bring a blessing not only to you and your family, but also to the world. Everything we do, we need to have the picture of us, but also how it's affecting the world. Because consciously, every thought sends out a vibration. And we want to make sure the activities that we do are sending out positive labor vibrations. Let's reclaim our lives, for we are the Christ spiritual labor force. We are the Christ spiritual labor force. You ever thought about that? You are the force. You are the activity. You are the labor. We are the labors. We are, we're here to do it. Somebody else is not going to show up. Somebody else is not going to come up from behind and do it. We're to do it. That's what it means to be mindfully engaged in a labor idea that is truly metaphysical. And this is from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Without ambition, one starts nothing. Without work, one finishes nothing. The prize will not be sent to you. You have to win it. Are you willing to work for it? And I'm not saying work 
in an unrealistic way. I'm not saying doing something that is really over, over the line. But are you willing to, to be up to the task of seeing your ideas through? Seeing your ideas through, not just having the recipe on, in the cookbook, but getting the ingredients, putting the ingredients together, putting it in the oven, and being able to serve it at the table. That's mindful labor. And if you just stop by having the cookbook, or you just stop by baking it or putting it all the ingredients together, but it's not really finished, it's not gonna end up at the table. And that's really where we want it, so we can share the gifts and the activities that we do. Our focus should be on holy labor. Let's enjoy a fun Labor Day and the memories this weekend, and let us do it with no regret. I challenge each and every one of us, may this be the Labor Day that we don't have any regrets. We let regrets go. We let go and let God. We let go and we let God. And this is a, like in closing, I'd like to share some wisdom with you from Midrash. This is Hebrew oral tradition. Stand not up against a river in its flood. Swim with the stream. This Sunday, I invite you to spend however your Labor Day weekend is going to be. Make it different this Sunday. Flow with the stream, the divine stream of the life force within you. Stop fighting the world. Stop trying to stop the tides. Stop trying to relive the past. Let's let go. And let us truly, whatever the, the activities that we've done, even if, even if you burn the cake or even like that young man who was working at the church and he uh, smashed the wall because the uh, buffer got, uh, got away from him. You know, at the time, it was not a good thing, I can understand. But you know, he, he grew. You learn from those mistakes. And I'm sure n next time, if he was doing that buffer, he'd know where the on and off switch was or he'd pull the plug a lot sooner. But in the time, you did the best you could. Live in the flow, live in the stream of truth, live in the labor stream, a mindful labor stream, because that's how you truly will not only find refreshment, but relaxation. And we just say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. This is the time in our service. We have the opportunity to share our love offerings, our gifts, and our tithes, and I invite you to take whatever your gift may be, I invite you to imbue it with your highest understanding of labor, of mindful labor, what that means to you this morning. And as you imbue it with your energy, know that it blesses our church, it blesses you, blesses our unity movement. And it blesses the labor because we are able to pay and employ people and it goes and it goes and it goes. It never stops. It truly is a stream, a stream of prosperity. If you'll join me in our prayer, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now our prayer of protection. May we be protected in every activity that we do. My, di my definition of really mindful labor is being in that high, high perfection, knowing that whatever we do, it's being done in a safe manner. So whatever activities that you're engaged in this Labor Day weekend, 2022, have some fun, but be mindful and truly live, live in a different attitude, live in the flow of the stream of being mindful in all that you do. And if you'll join me, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. May this be the Labor Day that you do not forget. May this be a special Labor Day. May, may be a Labor Day that you live in a stream of truth, that you are mindful of all the labor activities that you do, that you're not only blessing this world, you're blessing yourself, you're blessing our country, you're blessing this universe. And that is my prayer for each and every one of us. I'll see you next Sunday. Have a great and relaxing weekend. And remember, whatever you do, do it with a mindful attitude so it truly is a blessing to you, not sometime later, but right now in the very moment. And we just say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.